Good morning, friends. Today, we'll be reading Chapter 6 of Detective Camp. A raucous scream brought Dink out of a deep sleep. He bolted up off his pillow. Through sleepy, startled eyes, Dink peered out the window over his bed. Ronald was sitting on a fence post. The rooster flapped his wings and crowed once again. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Dink yawned, checked his watch, and saw that it was a little after 5.30. He noticed the small yellow paint smear on his pajama cuff again. He unzipped his sleeping bag and looked around the cabin. Everyone else was still sound asleep. Buzzy was snoring loudly, with his mouth open. Dink dressed quickly, put on sneakers, and left the cabin. A few stars still shone, although a dawn pink glow was appearing through the trees. He hurried across the dewy lawn to the back of the lodge. Opening the kitchen door quietly, he peered inside. No Mario, no anyone. He stepped inside and tiptoed to the dining room. The first thing he checked was the box of gloves. The ring was still there, exactly where Ruth Rose had left it. Then he removed the towel and looked at the painting. Now he could see that it was a winter scene on a farm. He peered closely at a yellow house. He figured that was where his pajama sleeve had picked up paint. The house looked fine, so he hadn't ruined it. Gently, he placed a fingertip on the house. The paint was dry. He replaced the towel, feeling better. He let himself out of the lodge and nearly bumped into remote. What are you doing here? Dink asked. The goat playfully butted his head against Dink's leg. Sorry, no cookies, Dink said giving the goat's head a rub. Remote turned away and trotted towards one side of the barn. Dink followed him. They came to a small chicken coop enclosed by a wire fence. Dink could hear low clucking sounds, and he could definitely smell chicken manure. Next to the hen house stood a large dog house with straw spilling out the door. Remote stepped inside and gracefully lay down with all four hooves tucked beneath his body. Okay, you go back to sleep, Dink said. We don't eat till it's eight o'clock. Just then, Dink heard someone approaching on the gravel driveway. He walked around the barn and saw Mario step down from a black truck. Dink stood still, feeling as if he'd been caught doing something wrong. Mario walked towards the kitchen door, yawning. He saw Dink and stopped. Early bird, eh? he said. <clears throat> Ronald woke me up, Dink said. I decided to look around. Want to help? Mario asked. Can you gather some eggs? There's a basket inside the coop. Sure, Dink said. Um, do chickens bite? Mario laughed. They might peck, but only if they're scared. Talk to them gently so they know you're not an enemy. If they're on a nest, just move your hand under them slowly and get the eggs. Dink opened the coop door. He saw about a dozen chickens, all on nests built along one wall. He found the basket hanging on a nail by the door. The chickens all stared at Dink as he approached their roosting places. Good morning, you guys, Dink said in what he hoped was a soothing voice. Got eggs? He reached out one hand slowly and slid it underneath a plump white chicken. She cocked her head at him, but didn't seem to mind his hand. Dink's fingers found two warm eggs. Grinning, he set them in the basket and moved to the next nest. Five minutes later, he walked into the kitchen with 16 eggs. Ah, enough for pancakes, Mario said. You feel like being my assistant? Grab that apron off the hook. Awesome, Dink said, tying a large white apron around his waist. It reached to the tops of his sneakers. They worked together for a while. Then Mario thanked Dink and sent him back to Moose Cabin. I appreciate your help, the cook, the cook said. You'll make a great chef someday. Dink smiled and headed back towards the cabins. The sun was glinting through the trees now, turning the dewy lawn into a blanket of tiny diamonds. The guys in Moose Cabin were tumbling out of bed, searching for something to wear. Dink grabbed his toothbrush and headed for the wash house. Josh was already there, and Dink told him what he'd been doing. You've got to make pancakes? 
Josh said with toothpaste foam on his lips. And you let me sleep? All I did was crack eggs and throw stuff in a big bowl, Dink said. Then he grinned. Mario did say he thought I'd make an excellent chef. Josh shook his head. I'll bet there'll be eggshells in all the pancakes, he said. Nope, Dink said, turning on the water. Just in yours. At eight o'clock, everyone was sitting at the picnic tables. Dink and Josh waved at Ruth Rose, and she joined them at their table. I snuck back in the lodge this morning, Dink whispered. The ring was still there. I hope she finds it. Who's that guy? asked Josh, pointing towards a man talking with Buzzy. The man had sleek gray hair. He was thin, had a pointy nose, and was dressed in a gray tracksuit. He reminded Dink of a greyhound dog. His small black eyes seemed to take in everything. The man sat down at another table, and Buzzy walked into the kitchen. He and the other counselors brought out platters of pancakes, jugs of syrup, and pitchers of orange juice. Guys, I just thought of something, Ruth Rose said. I want to find out if Mademoiselle Musée found her ring yet. Want to come and see her with me? When? Josh asked. Now, right after we eat, Ruth Rose said. It'll just take a minute. After a few minutes, Luke blew his whistle. Good morning, everyone, he said. I hope you all slept well. How about a big cheer for Mario's fabulous flapjacks? Everyone clapped and whistled. And this gentleman is Detective Rob, Luke went on. He's going to be your teacher this week. You'll learn all about fingerprinting and other cool stuff. Mademoiselle Musée has agreed to teach you about forgery. It's going to be a great week. The man in gray stood up and nodded his head. Morning, kids, he said. Don't let me interrupt your breakfast. Dig in. One more thing, Angie called out. Everyone, come back here right after chores. You'll get your map clues and you can start to hunt for the treasure. Everyone cheered, then started to eat. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose finished first, then got up and headed for the kitchen. How are those flapjacks? Mario asked, winking at Dink. The best I ever ate, Josh said, even if Dink's hands touched the batter. The kids entered the dining room. Mademoiselle Musée was standing at the table with her back to them. Um, excuse me, Ruth Rose said. Mademoiselle Musée turned around. Dink looked past her at the box of latex gloves. The ring was gone. Good, he thought. We wondered if you found your ring, Ruth Rose asked. The woman stared at the three kids. Yes, I found it here this morning, she said. I, I must have forgotten where I put it. Great, Ruth Rose said. You said you might show us how you clean paintings, so we... Yes, the woman said. Come closer, but please, touch nothing. The kids gathered around her. The painting was still there. Dink could see a barn, children playing in the snow, and the yellow house with smoke coming from the chimney, all under a bright blue sky. Mademoiselle Musée pulled off her gloves, dropped them into a basket under the table, then pulled a fresh pair on. I have finished this painting, she said, sliding it to the center of the table, but I will demonstrate on one that I have not yet cleaned. She walked quickly into the great room and returned with a painting only as large as a book. Flipping the small painting over, she pulled out a few nails with pliers. She slid the canvas out of the frame and laid it on the table. The kids looked at the soiled painting. It was impossible to tell what was beneath the dirt. Mademoiselle Musée picked up a cotton ball and wet it from one of the bottles. As you can see, this painting is covered with years of soot and smoke, she said. Moving her hand in a small circle, she began gently wiping the damp cotton ball over a small section of the painting. Slowly, the dirt disappeared until the green branches of a tree became visible. That's amazing, Ruth Rose said. Who painted this? I won't know until I clean the entire painting, Mademoiselle Musée said. Then she pointed to the winter snow scene. But that one is a Grandma Moses. 
Who's she? asked Josh. My grandmother loves her paintings, Ruth Rose said. She was real old when she painted, right, Mademoiselle Musée? Yes, she started out as a simple farmer's wife, Mademoiselle Musée said. And now some of her paintings are worth millions of dollars. Okay, so you are going to close this browser tab, go back to the assignment, answer the questions, and then submit them. Have a great day, guys.